Hi everybody, I'm Simon Cooper from the Cooper Strip Club and I'm doing solo today. I'm going to be stripping this piece of metal, which most people will know when you're following a VW Beetle. This is the engine lid. I thought it was a bonnet, but I thought I'd better do a bit of Wikipedia on it. And they say it's called an engine lid. So I'm going to strip this half. I'm going to be using this at the home shows as one of our displays. So um, we were kindly given this engine lid in Ashburton recently uh, by a gentleman that was doing up a beetle and had one left over. His name is Brian and thank you very much. So we'll see if we can make your spare engine lid famous. So this is our stripper and what you find with automotive stripping, there's all sorts of paint. There's the original uh, factory paint, um, and then you have all sorts of stuff on top. And this red one on top looks like one of those Junoni type ones, and it tends to just liquefy. Um, so what we do is we keep the surface wet with the stripper as we go. Just keep an eye on where the dry patches are. Now any questions anyone has, just put them in there. We, we'd love to have what's going on in your mind so we can answer those. Now, we'll let that just do its thing for a little bit. So you can see, a lot of people think paint stripper has to bubble like this stuff. Um, it, it looks impressive, but I actually prefer it to do what it's doing up over here on the red where it actually spends longer getting through all the layers rather than um, a, a quick bubble as I say looks impressive but it pulls the stripper away from the other layers. Now um, how does Coopers fit into automotive stripping and other metal um, you know caravans anything at all with um, it, it'll strip paint off any metal it doesn't matter if it's aluminium uh, copper brass steel it doesn't matter it's quite happy it doesn't damage any of them. Um, and one of its benefits is that because we're not um, um, aggregate blasting, where sometimes you can create heat on those large surfaces, so bonnets and door panels, um, which if you cause heat can create warpage, um, what then happens is the, um, um, the, the piece doesn't quite fit right again when it goes back. This is a cold system, so there's no damage to those big panels. So, we're probably going to find later a bog in here, and there's, you can see the pink from that so it'll it'll deal with that but it's a bit of a box of chocolate so to quote mr gump it's you don't know what you're going to find um, and it will take off any paint so it doesn't matter whether it's two pack or, or single pack whatever it is it'll it'll get through um, now we have a little play see what it's up to so if you just keep putting stripper on, it will eventually get to the metal, but you do go through way more product than you need. And so often you, you make choices as you go and you go, okay, well, let's get off what's there. So what I'm going to do is just take off right there. Now I use this um, little square blade. You can use whatever blade you want. This is our blade. It's got a, a slightly curved edge. Uh, much easier on this one there. And the benefit of this is that you're not gonna rip into the steel. So it's a, it's a more user-friendly. So I've actually got George hiding in the background. Can you grab the DIY guide, George? It's on top over there. see in the pink there there's filler that's been used in the past. We'll find the guide later. When you're scraping, um, careful not to get the 
edge here, the tip, ripping into these curvy bits, so just be mindful of where that is. There we go, now I'm not looking the lights. This part one, um, we're taking off the moment what's on the surface. And this is our part one, which is putting the stripper on, keeping it wet, and technically when it gets to the surface, we take it off. Or when you've got to a point where you think, well, putting more stripper on just isn't efficient anymore. So you sort of take off what's there. Always be mindful of the, of the curves, but like sharing a sheet. And we go with the, with the curves. Now, lurking. Where am I? That's all my stuff. I have a secret weapon called a teaspoon. Building up, so we'll keep them all aside for later to have a look at. Right, back to more strap. So when you see this at a home show or one of our events, you'll say, "I saw that being done and done live." Last time I did a bonnet, it was a Mori Minor one, and I decided, I well, didn't actually decide, it decided itself to fall off the table. So I'll try not to do that today. Okay. We get often asked, can you brush it? You can. We don't prefer brushing. We, we like spraying because it's more easier to keep it wet. It's easier to keep the product, um, that you're able to direct it where it needs. And these triggers are ideal for, you can get over a large surface quite quick. Um, now, what I'm showing you here is, a, a, I'm doing it for a, a project for our displays, but you, you find out how well it's stripping and then you decide on how much at a time you do. You, you may decide to do like the whole bonnet or the, or the whole door or two doors. You decide how much you do at a time depending on the paints that you're taking off. So you do your sample first, like we did in this corner. That tells us what we've got, and then we decide on the amount we do at a time. So, and so you just keep an eye on procedures, on proceedings. You can see the, the bog, how it tends to come up from the edges, and then it, where it goes down into the thicker stuff. This is um, an interesting thick bit there. Sometimes these it's a bog like that, they'll just pick out. So you don't have to always get it all with the strip. So 
we may find all of this area here is got the filler. So we'll find out later. Now, because we're trying to not keep you here for a long, long time, we try to keep it moving along, but in the real stripping world, you can put the stripper on there and just leave it, just go away and let it do its job. Keep it wet and then it'll just soften away and do its thing. So we tend to push a little bit faster at the, at the, the demonstrations we do, but um, know that you can just let it soak away. Pushing hard, we're just sliding it like that. As I expose the, the, the dry bog, I like to get some more on as I go. one taking off bulk and every project every cars are tip real tip a bit like exterior windows where they just have so much stuff put over top very few people actually strip things right back they just give it a scarf and put some more paint over top and cross their fingers we like to we sort of come along when you know that that isn't an option anymore a lot of a lot of garages around the place with a nice classic car in it and they part of their thing is they want to take it back to the raw and do it this way okay so we're coming along quite nicely now what if 
few more pointers while we wait. Um, I'm busy dripping here under these lights on the middle of the summer, so I might just remove the pack. One day it'll be winter, and more designed for that, to be honest. So I do not think this is because it's hard work, it is not. Okay, I said before about no warpage um, because of any heat. Um, some people say, well, I'll just get my car sent off and dipped, which is a possible, which can be done. Um, of course, the, the strippers get into all the channels where all the cables go and all those sort of things, and that may not be a problem, uh, but a lot of people may not want to go to that extent. They may um, be stripping a, a, a small part of it, or they actually want to be doing it themselves. It's part of the process is having done the car up completely themselves as much as possible. So a lot of people enjoy this part, um, and this is just our, our way of doing things. So. is good. Now, in regards to health and safety and all those sort of things, the, the gloves I'm using, all that, we uh, recently shot a video on all that and you can go to our website and see all that stuff it's on cooperstripclub.com and you can see ventilation and gloves and masks and all those sorts of things we just figured if you are watching these I don't really want to hear us repeat the same thing every time Now, if I'd left that on another five minutes, we, we probably would have got down through those bits. So, probably guilty of just taking it up a little bit early. Again, once you've done your first patch, you get a feel for all the timings in it. Okay. Over here is quite interesting. Over here, I think we've got the. We chose to strip that side because on this side there's this Volkswagen um, shadowing still there. We thought it'd be a bit of a shame to lose that, so we we've kept him there. Now, when you get all this off, we're going to get access to the the things that you may not want to see. Like there might be a bit of rust and different things like that, and. Our system isn't a rust killer, it is a rust exposer. And it means that you can then do whatever repairs you need to do. And you can see it really is what there. I was at a place recently down in Gore and they had HQ Holden and they thought they knew where the rust was in the bonnet, but it was amazing how many bits were hidden and uh, if they'd have just painted over top that would have been still there lurking away. Now I did a, um, I can feel lead there, that's, that's actually um, been soldered. I was up at Dairy Creek, Dairy Flat, sorry to all you Dairy Flat people, get the name wrong. Um, and the V-dub quite up there that I can't pronounce. And they brought a, um, a lid exactly like this. But the paint on that one was a very different one. It was a two pack one, it, it, it took longer to get through. Um, so every type of surface has got a different type of paint to work its way through. Now, I'll just leave that to it.
Now, sometimes when you're doing this, I've got a steel wool. This is a German steel wool, very long stranded, very sharp, and that can be used in those sort of parts, which can last through. That's all that. She wouldn't do that at the start because you'd just go through a mountain of wool. This is wet with the stripper, and I'm giving this a scrub. This is part two of what I'm doing here on the guide, which is wet scrubbing Oop, the surface. It generally happens. Thanks, George. And again, this is one of the advantages of using the stripper uh, wet, uh, sorry not wet, um, spraying it as you can put bits and pieces on where it's needed. Dissolve it off. Now, I'm just going to put some on here and leave it while we continue on, which is what you should do, which is sort of what the live stream is about. Okay. So we'll forget about that bit of pink stuff for the meantime, and we'll just focus on some stuff. See how this area here, I mean that's where a number plate's gone, so there's moisture that's been trapped against the paint for many years, so that's obviously where rust can get in and do its thing. If it dries off a little bit, just puff a bit more on. You try not to dry it, you don't want to scrub a dry surface because that will create more work than you need and also creates dust and you don't want dust. But who knows what the paint was made of. Okay, so if I'd done both sides I would have really spent the same amount of time, there's no the doubling the amount of surface definitely doesn't double the amount of time. Wiping off the, the bits that are wet. Now we move on to part three. So where's the guide gone, George? Here it is, over here. Wrong one over. Okay, put my finger on it. 
We've done part one and two. And part one and two are red, um, being red for the stripper. Okay, and so we've stripped off what's on. And even though steel is, you don't think of steel as being having an in, but um, definitely steel has a fiber and paint does soak into it. Um, so we've got that. Now we want to rinse it clean. This is this part three. Flush the surface clean. And down here it says spray scrub, spray wipe. And anyone that purchases one of our packs, there's one of those guides, a smaller version in the, in the pack. And we've got a blue one here. Yay. Let me get rid of this guide here. And what we do is we move on to these two new products. We've got what we call a grit embedded pad. This is like a Scotch Bright, um, but grittier. And, and um, this is a, a nylon weave, um, and it's got these grits all put through it. And I like it because it really bites in. And this blue one is our flusher. And, and this is a paraffin based spirit. And this one here is not to neutralize anything. This one's job is to rinse the surface clean. So I'll get myself a rag in the ready. So we spray. We don't leave this for five minutes or anything. We work with it straight away. So we spray and then we scrub. So any easy to remove surface corrosion will just come away with this. You'll see there's a bit of that rust residue stuff there and so you can a bit more time. Sometimes people ask us, can we use thinners or meths or something? We like something that is slower drying and not as stinky. This paraffin based spirit stays wetter longer, so there's more work time. So you're going to use less and it doesn't stink. It smells a little bit like candles. So we're rinsing off leftover stripper, we're rinsing off residues of paint, and just make sure I got it on here. There's a serial number on the bonnet. Oh, cool. Oh, on the boot. Uh, the terminology. Oh, that's cool. We won't get rid of that. We're just... An unexpected cookie. I'm using that language right. Easter egg. Easter egg. Ah. So wiping off. Oh, I'll get another bit more look at. <laughs> so that's there. We're just This is a, a real full blown repair down here with all the solder and everything in that. If you're looking for good Z Dub restoration advice, I was pretty impressed with Arthur G. I think it's Arthur spelt normally with G I from Dairy Flat. Uh, he taught me a few things about filling steel. I was quite impressed. Okay. And spray scrub, spray white. Now, if you found no rust to deal with, and you've got, and there's no corrosion problems or anything like that, then this is ready for painting. So, obviously in this one, we've got a little bit here to deal with. And I'll just have a little quick look. That will, it might take half an hour more to soften right through there and 
as that stuff all just turns into a mush. But everything we do is not about creating dust. It's dust stuff that's from all the toxic stuff. And yes, you can wear a glove, a mask, but that'll then just float around anyway. Okay. Let's just leave that there. And we'll show you some products while we give that just a little bit more time. So I'll just slide that over there. thing I really haven't used today is our, um, our brushes. We usually find places for these copper brushes. We have a coarser brass one as well. Um, you would usually use these in these sorts of places, but the wool was perfect. So, George, I need you to help me move a bench for a moment. I'll bring the bench back shortly so you can that in there. products, there's things like um, glass. Is it all right on glass? Is it all right on rubber? Um, so on the glass, if it's got a film that's been put over it, like it's actually a tint film, uh, it will strip that off. So on normal solid glass, which has got a tint in the glass, it's fine. Um, but if it's actually a tint that's like a, like a cellophane sheet that's been put over the top, then it will strip that off. On, on the rubbers, if it's on there for a very short time, you spray it on and then you wipe it off with a cloth, it's fine. But don't put it on there and leave it on the rubber. Um, it will start to soften it. Um, and, oh yeah, another good one, two or three. We've got um, Silent. I don't really think much about Silence once. I used to, when I had my cabin making factory, I used to drive my neighbours nuts uh, with the sand is going all night. So this system is silent, so you can work away in your shed at night, not waking up the neighbours or getting the noise patrol around. So that's always an advantage. Um, talked before about um, the submersion, but also there's no water in this, so you're not causing any corrosion. So that's, a, again, a big advantage. Everything on that bonnet is, uh, we're not creating anything new in the, in the corrosion game. Uh, all paints, as I've said, doesn't matter what the paint is. In 35 years we've been doing this, we've yet to find something that won't strip. Some things take longer than, than others. Uh, it's just finding out how long it needs. Um, grease. Um, we had a client once who wanted to do the engine bay, had the engine out and wanted to do the paint in there but had this real thick layer of grease and stuff in there and so the stripper just turned it into a, into a mush and he used a hot water blaster in that part there. Um, so there's water being used there. Um, and of course there's no sanding and all that so that's all those parts there. And um, Now let's talk, show you some products. So this is a five liter stripping pack. We've got packs from two liters up to 200 liters. Your typical cars, like a, um, a mini, um, you, you might get away with a, a two liter pack on a small mini if you're doing all just the outside. Um, but Morries and Escorts and V-Dubs um, and, and all that sort of thing, they generally need about a five. Um, the, and it depends how much you're doing, because there's a lot of metal that's painted inside the cabin as well as under the engine lid and under the boot part at the front. So this depends on how far you go. It, once you get into um, sort of Holdens and King, you know, the HQ uh, Holdens and uh, Balkans and those wonderful Camaros and all those sort of things, you will need uh, up towards the 10 litre packs. So here's a five. Now all these packs you can see online, again, cooperstripclub.com and you see all the packs there with all their pricings. So here's the 5 litre of strip, that's why we call it a 5 litre pack because it's the size of the stripper. To make pouring easy, we have a 
tap and a cap that goes on there. Makes it really, really easy. And the flusher, we generally use about half the amount of flush. So two and a half litres of flusher. And um, so, and then you need something to put it into. This is already in an applicator bottle. Um, so trigger goes on there. This one here is for that one there. And then there's some spare triggers which go with it as well. We show you in um, the getting started guide that's on our website how to um, fill your bottles and how to clean the triggers later and how to store the products. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. Now, for every meet, a litre of stripper, you get a metre of the wool. Again, this is not normal wool, this is not your crumbly, short stranded stuff, this is long stranded European wool. Um, really, really good stuff. Got a funnel for pouring the flusher. You've got a um, uh, one of the, there's more than one of those. There's three of those. Three of those brushes. And there's one of those blades that I was using before as well. Um, now, there's a meter of the grip pad, so they have 250 mil lengths. And that's ideal for that. And in our packs, we have our wood finish, which has got nothing to do with the car, um, but you might want to use it on the dash. Um, it's ideal for that sort of thing, but it's there anyway. Thank you. you can befriend someone else with it. Okay, so that's the pack, five pack liters. This is what we say as we say, this is five pack liters. And this should do um, uh, they're all those middle sized cars quite happily. For, now we freight this worldwide, so uh, we can get it uh, quite fast um, around the world. So again, just go online, find the pack you like, and away you go. If you want to save a few dollars, join our strip club online, and you'll get a discount voucher um, for your purchase, which is always good to save a few dollars as well. Send us photographs of what you're stripping. Uh, we can give you really good advice. We've been doing this for 30, 40 years, and so we've come across most things that you're gonna be doing and we can show you how to go about it. If you have any requests of things you want to strip, just let us know and uh, we can look out for it when we find it. We can use it on another live stream. Now, um, we'll leave it alone for a minute. Tomorrow at midday, we're gonna be leaving our studio here in Woodville and traveling all of um, my- it, it fell behind the cardboard. Oh, did it? Okay. We're going to be travelling 20 minutes down the road to weather dependent to strip this window. This is uh, lots and lots and lots of people who have exterior windows to do. So if you know anybody who might be interested, if you can let them know, please. And So, so we'll leave it at that, you know what's going to happen, we're just going to keep it wet until it's got through and then we'll just finish off that. When we um, put this on to Facebook we'll, um, and on our website it'll have that piece all finished but all we're going to do is let it soak away until it's right through and it'll be like the rest of it. I don't really see a point in keeping you waiting for another 20 minutes to watch the paint undry. So, is there anything more on my board? No. So any questions, just ask away. 
the live streams are no good unless we have your positive feedback. Okay, well, if you're looking for a stripper, a stripper that really gets it off, Cooper's. The stripper that gets it off every time.